Hey Vox here, so the market and what's gonna happen to it with launch in a couple hours, what's gonna happen with it going forward after launch, everything that you need to know about it this year, investments, general ideas, obviously as we go through the year we'll talk a little bit more and, and more specific to that time frame, but this really is gonna be a video that I'm gonna kinda lay out uh, how the MLB year usually happens, what you should do with cards, everybody's like, should I buy, should I sell? Um, and let's just get to that first, right? Should you buy, should you sell, should you keep cards, what you want to do? Obviously, if you're going to use the card, you probably want to keep it. If you pull Mike Trout and you really like Mike Trout, just keep them and use them, right? In the end, it's a game, just have fun with it. But if you're like, oh, but I want to maximize my stub on return, what the heck is going to happen with this Trout? Now, here is the numbers from last year. If you recall, the game launched the 17th, the general population got it the 21st. And you're like, all right, it came out 400K. Kind of went down, went back up, went back up. General population got it and it went down, okay? So we can see something else like that happening this year. People get the game, they get a couple free packs, they get a little bit of stubs in there, I don't know, they rip packs, right? Because that's kind of fun in a Diamond Dynasty team building game, ripping packs to build out your team. Hopefully you get lucky. Um, and then here's what ended up happening with Mike Trout, right? You saw it go down originally 350. It kind of hung out there, went up to 400 through May. You saw the number 400 get breached again. May about that keeps going up. Um, and then you're going to start to see it go rise even more. You're like, whoa, why is it rising more? Well, two things. He is a gatekeeper for the Live Series collection. If you recall, the Live Series collection this year is Randy Johnson, Roberto Clemente, and uh, Frank Thomas. So collections, live series right here. Now, these cards are not nearly as good as they were last year uh, where we had an endgame third baseman and Chipper Jones leading the collection. Randy Johnson probably won't be wanted as much as him since he's just a pitcher and generally pitchers aren't as wanted. And, and as a pitcher... He's okay, I'd say. He's not as good as like Kluber in years past or that Kershaw card uh, from a few years ago that tormented us. But anyways, last what you happened last year was the stub sales came in. And when stub sales come in where they're basically like, all right, you get 50% uh, more stubs for the same amount of money. Like, oh, wow. So people buy stubs. They buy the card they want. This Mike Trout ended up in June getting up over half a million stubs from, if you recall... Rare it is right now, 350k at least last year. And then, uh, then what we happened is we ended up getting like pack sales and stuff. July, the home run derby came what by and offered a ton of packs. I think any changes and came by uh, and offered 90 plus live series diamonds out of them. And it absolutely just threw out a glut of trouts right there in July. And then you can kind of see they keep doing that through the summer months. And this is when people really fall in love with the game when they start giving out a whole bunch of packs and trout becomes less and less valuable but that's months down the road so that's that's kind of the same like arc that we can kind of see and we've seen this last couple years with trout we'll probably see it again if you go ahead to the market um it, this is the big question i always get i also want to talk about other coin making opportunities here in this game but i do want to talk about because it's kind of on people's minds what's going to happen with trout right probably go down when gen pop gets it but otherwise it's got that upward trajectory especially and not just trout a lot of the top end diamonds as long as they don't give out crazy um stub things they will go up as long as those um things hit okay so go ahead and grab your gatekeepers if you want right now but everything else like 85s to 89s they kind of generally trickle down a little bit especially if 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 sorry sds gives out um any sort of like 85 plus diamond rewards all right Let's talk about how to make coins right now. Now, obviously, the number one thing people always talk about is flipping coins. It's it's be, or sorry, flipping cards. It's been in the game for years. Whether you want to do low end cards, high end cards, it's the same concept. You look at the spread between cards. The, like the spreads right now aren't great. You see some ones like if you if you just put up a buy order for Nelson Cruz, right? Buy him for 304. You can then turn around and flip him for 462. It's an easy way of making stubs. I mean, that's a hundred stub flip right there. You just got to do it hundreds, thousands of times, and you can get uh, like infinite stubs that way, all the way up to the max stub count, which is five million. Okay, just want you to know that's flipping cards at its basic. Um, you don't really need much more explanation than that. People like to look through equipment and flip this stuff for any sort of like differences in prices. But like I said, it's a little narrow now. Once Gen Pop gets the game, more people will be there. There's a lot more casual players. Prior pre-launch is a lot of hardcores that pay the extra money. Once we get on Xbox Game Pass for free, then a lot of people start making uh, I'd say worse decisions with their stubs, and they just kind of like buy now or they just sell now, and they little they widen a little bit. We'll say later. That's at least what we saw last year. Okay. Maybe this year is different. It's, you know, everything can always change. All right, another good way of making coins, saving event cards after the events go away, especially, and I will say especially 
once that July like big collection comes out, there'll be another like last year there was like a big collect there was like a spring big collection, July big collection, and like an August a, like a, sorry a, a fall big collection. So it's three of them last year. They might do that again. Those generally go like crazy up in value, especially cards that are expired. BR programs that got expired same way. So if you do end up playing these online modes, not a bad idea. Just having your binder. That Nolan Ryan's not very expensive. If you can afford it, just to have it stashed so you can even use Nolan Ryan. He's like okay, I would say. He isn't like, you know, right home to your parents about how insane he is. It's no longer, not nearly as good, but you got 17,000 spare stubs. I mean, it, you really got to be flexible. You got to have uh, the, the, like, I would use your stubs to flip right now. Um, and only if you can afford to save and park 17K. That's more of like a, a long-term investment into these cards, okay? So, that's a big thing. Cards will go up with that down the road because the supply is gone, right? And they're not going to resupply them until very late in the year. Face of the franchise, guys. I'm getting questions on that. Um, so let's go to that series. We also have some really cool stuff down the road. I think these face of the franchise guys are like 20K. I think that's not a bad idea, right? These things are going to wait a couple weeks. I think people are anticipating everybody taking them, right? The NL Central cards, which is everybody's first pick, are crazy low. Whereas you see the guys that are maybe in, in different guys down the road. Uh, people haven't gotten to that level in their experience yet. So those things will start to go down. I think 20K is a good buy level for these cards. They're some of the best cards in the game. This Brian Reynolds card. I mean, just because they have active quirks too, right? Dead Red Fighter Unfazed. Um, he, he's a pretty good card right there. There's a lot of really good cards here. Edmund here, another NL Central. So might not be a bad idea to scoop a couple of those up if you want a little bit of an investment. They could go down in price, but... I don't know, just using them for 20K and then like waiting for them to go away. And then uh, you can kind of sell them a little bit later, especially if there's collections down the road. Uh, face of the franchise, not a bad sign, right? It's not, it might not be a gangbusters investment, but there it is for 20K. Um, the general rule is to buy on days that like new packs and new content come out. And if you ever want to know what content's on its way, just like if you're on any of these screens, just hit up, right? Just hit up and then you can go over and they'll kind of give you a little bit of a content schedule here. We got content this week. We got Headliner Pack coming tomorrow. Nike City Connect. The new event's going to be based off those Nike City Connect squads. Opening day, it looks like it's like really highlighted. There's like lightning bolts around it. I'm, I'm guessing something's coming out opening day uh, on the 7th. Then we gotta got more new packs on the 8th. So content a couple times a week, sometimes maybe more, sometimes maybe less. But just FYI, that's kind of what's happening. Um, I want to talk about these exchange sets though. Okay. This is kind of big. Maybe I shouldn't have buried this. These collections, sorry, not collections. These exchanges. You know, you don't see a lot of people talk about these. Exchange silver players for a gold player, bronze player for a silver player. Let's just talk about the silver players. You can apply this logic to the the elite players. We'll also talk about packs and how good packs are right now um, here in a bit after this. But basically, if you go to the market and look at silver cost players. Now, like you can use the, the stuff you got in your binder from like grinding cards. But let's just start at silvers. Right, silvers themselves, 79s, 370. You can get a 79 for 311. But anyways, on this spreadsheet, basically I made it of, as you see, look at the right side of the screen right here, right here. 79s, 78s, 75s. You can do these things with lower ends with bronzes to silvers, but I went through and how much it costs to acquire basically each one of these overalls, and then like how many points each one of them. So if you look at the if you look at the um exchange, you gotta get 18,000 points. For the exchange okay so you look through the exchange silver to gold players exchange items see how this is like 75 is 19 22 and then you got to hit as you see right above my head right there 18,000 of them so basically what i did was a cost break analysis how many times if you get like 776 and a 75 about 940 stubs it takes to do that set that's just with cards you buy off the market obviously put in um, you know, buy nows. Don't actually just buy it straight off the market. Make sure people sell it to you for cheaper prices. But anyways, I ended up doing ten of them. So uh, let's let's look at the potential return first before I end up pulling the packs to see how good that exchange set is this year. Last year it was better because like say you look at these eighty fours. Like whoa, twenty five hundred four thousand for a Will Smith. Um, I don't know. You're gonna get slapped with that too. It's gonna go for a lot of you know. Might get a little Ozzy Albies. Now these prices could go down, especially with Gen Pop release and people are opening packs. But like these are generally pretty high right now for these golds, okay? But the change to quick sell values this year really kind of screwed this a little bit. Because if you look at 80s, some of them are going for like 590, 422. So like if you get oh, I saw those 79s. So if you get like a gold down here, 680, these are a little bit of an L. Like if you pull an 80 overall. So you really gotta hope for 81s, kind of like 82 pluses. Once you get to 82, you're basically profiting off every single pull. So 
it is it is unfortunate with the quick sell change to this year's game where it used to be all golds or a thousand all diamonds or five thousand they changed it it's more incremental now um i don't love it i, I really like to standardize because it was that way for years and it just felt right so let's go ahead and open some packs i got some other grind packs but let's go ahead and uh open this gold exchange we got an 80 overall so we got a major l we lost half of our coins on that diaz um and i'm gonna not do this but i'm gonna do another pack track that i showed an 81 oof i wonder if like pack weight is towards like the low end hopefully i can pull okay so an 83 for 1300 now obviously the sell now is the worst way you can dispose of gold cards or any card really uh because you, you want to list the card you don't want to sell right now this one's an 83 1600 so that's probably closer to like 2000 uh minus the 10 percent tax but we'll say 17 to 1800 coins on that uh 82 there is uh none listed that you can sell to now but Cronenworth, maybe we'll get like a thousand out of him okay we then have an 80 okay so actually yeah, sell now 9 and 31 that's not bad for that austin haynes card because the Orioles sets and, you know a lot of these cards values are driven like but sets without like big diamonds their golds and silvers are expensive because people just want to do the set for the live series so austin Hayes, even though he's an 80 he's actually expensive because the oriole sets doesn't have a lot of big cards in it and people of course want to get it done uh we then got another 80 overall but you know uh seattle i guess doesn't have any big diamonds um, so 830 for him, which is a kind of a break even slight. These are kind of L's. I, I actually think I lost on every single one except for two. Oh man, Malcast. It looks like these things are not weighted hard towards the 84s. Small sample size, I know, but I think this is terrible. Sorry. We did a little experiment. We wanted to do it live um, instead of me doing this and then telling you if it was good or not or just ignoring it. But anyways, looks like exchanges didn't do so well for me so maybe avoid them this year without the without the minimum thousand like last year was great because there's the minimum thousand quick sell so you like literally couldn't lose a lot of these times but now you can so anyways let's talk about packs are packs profitable today i bought a 75k bundle now i will tell you i'll look i'll, I'll show you my stats it's right here on this page right here um so i i tracked all 50 packs right here okay i tracked them all in this and i got one extra chase pack out of that packs i i, I pulled one diamond it was worth fourteen thousand. now these are just the sell now prices so like i said these are like the lowest prices possible or the quick sell prices so these are like this is the worst value you can get out of the pack so just fyi when i tell you i didn't return value but right before opening this i pulled in a uh, i pulled an acuna and got like what 200 and some thousand stubs out of that so it's really dependent on diamonds like in a long term i think i've profited because i've pulled in my pools so far this year trout acuna twice like every single big diamond except i think except i did i buy tatis did i buy i think i had to buy tatis and, and trey turner every other like big live series i even pulled pujos um so anyways the return i got of these packs out of my pack and track right here i got including only pulling two golds out of my two chase packs of the topper which um you generally have a good idea you could get a good job pulling packs out of this i got exactly thirty nine thousand eight hundred and twenty six stubs when you add all these things together including the chase pack topper so not great thirty nine thousand stubs now that is literally the minimum amount that you could have got out of that bundle um but i lost what is that uh thirty five thousand stubs plus on this bundle so just fyi they are gambles um i think in the long term they might be profitable but that's kind of a like a gamble so in my limited sample size today not great actually tracking the stubs to packs ratio so even when th this time of year packs are the best they're going to be all year right because sds gives packs away like they're like just freaking like candy at a parade or like beads in new orleans okay they just give them away like crazy so it ends up destroying the value of packs that you want to buy off the market unless they're marked at a discount the packs are 100% not worth it. So if you want a card, don't expect to pull it out of a pack. Buy it off the market and work the market that way. That's my, my biggest tip for you at the end of this. Um, uh, of course, we'll talk about investments going through the year, but that's not what this, ve this video is really about. So I'll, I'll stop the video now. Hopefully uh, you guys enjoyed it. That is it. Uh, please like and subscribe. It really helps out the channel. Thanks for watching. Call to action. I'll see you tomorrow.